Hey, I'm trying to figure out how to, I think there's a way to change the orientation here. But maybe should have done that at another time. Let me just see if I can manage that. No. Will it let me? Will it let me? No, it won't. Anybody? Anyway, uh, thank you so much. Seven people. Whoop, whoop. So what we're going to do is we're going to go across here, going to move the camera, set you down so you can actually see what we're doing. We're jumping into that uh, that building that I put up on the community section of my channel. So if you want to go there, screenshot it, and then you've got it, you can paint along. Um, hello, Francis in Ireland. Hello, John. Hello, Mark. And hello, Lee Mark. So uh, good, good to see you. So we're going to be using, um, I'm going to use actually my... Lamy Safari with its uh, lovely little fine nib. I think I'm not sure if it's the finest nib, but I'm going to use that today. Um, and then I'm going to use some watercolor. I've got my hair dryer all set up. We've got an R, so let's get going. Okay, so bear with me while I move you across here. You get to see the other side of the studio. That's you now moved across. So there we go. That's us set up now. So I've got the page set round um, landscape. Hello, Penny in North Devon. Hopefully your weather is better than ours. Ours is absolutely pretty much atrocious at the minute. Right. So let's, let me see. I just want to get up the screen here so that I can actually uh, see any comments that you're putting up. Okay. Oh my goodness. This is so frustrating. I'm going to have to turn it round. <laughs> The wonders of modern technology, unfortunately, when it doesn't work that well. Okay, so let's get this, I'll try and get this settled then. Hopefully it'll stay in position for us. Sorry folks, if I had um, been more, more organized, I would have had that little, I thought I had flipped that setting change to the landscape, but there you go. Anyway, okay, so. Let's move this across here so we know where we are. Hopefully you can all you can all see okay. Yeah, the weather is, uh, I mean, it's just bizarre. I was talking with a guy in work today and he was saying, you know, in our climate, it seems to be that the impact of uh, global warming is that we are getting much more rain, which is just. So I want to really uh, jump in here. So I'm using um, a landscape page. Let me see, are we okay there? Can you all see all right? Okay, so we're using a landscape page, obviously, which is running this way, and it's a, um, it's actually a portrait piece. Now, I wonder, actually, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? There we are. Isn't that much better? Let's see, hopefully this won't fall over when I move this here. Da, da, da. Technical problems, hopefully, solved. Great. Now, okay, let's let's begin. So we are looking. First of all, I'm getting in this uh, this strong this strong line down here. I'm really wanting a nice and free sketch. So we're just gonna uh, keep going here, and I'm not gonna be too concerned about what I would deem to be like mistakes and anything like that. I'm going to hold all of those thoughts away. And we're just going on this sign here. If you look at it, um, it says student wrist Swanson house. So it's just a sign. So I'm just going to ignore that because I, I really don't want that. in. Um, so let me see I'm here. I'm just trying to judge where these bits are right. Okay. So when it comes to perspective, what I'm trying to do is actually draw what's there rather than what I think should be there and I I do find that really continuously moving the pen as well does keep me nice and free so I want to do that maybe that's a little bit thinner than it would maybe want to be this is quite a complex kind of scene here actually now I'm gonna you'll forgive me if I'm not able to <laughs> morning or whatever time of day you're having Good morning, Dan. It is three o'clock afternoon here. Is it the early hours for you by memory? Are you in Australia? Is that where you're based? So it, it probably very early morning for you. So if you're online then, thank you so much for 
deciding to come on. So I am just gunning through this because I really want to be able to get lots of this done and also not keep on the fussy head. And the building then comes down this side here at this kind of an angle. Okay. And then we're going to move this. Noticing these lines here. Just trying to read it as we go actually and noticing those different points where the building is intersecting which is really really helpful when you're just trying to get a feel for the shape and lines and now that line as you well know wasn't very straight and I'm not commenting on that as an excuse that's gonna be some character from the point of view of what I'm looking to do for this and it's the speed that I'm wanting to move at today because I want to do as much as I can in the hour that I have set aside for it. And I know that a, a lot of you, um, I'm sure that you have other lives than your, what you paint. So it's actually about trying to grab the time that you do have and really enjoying that. Obviously I'm you're putting in the added pressure of a life here, but hey ho, it is what I like. Okay, Dan, you said there, panic tables are bad, Dan, morning. Dan, 7 a.m. Olympic Peninsula, Washington, before coffee. My goodness. And um, Francis says, I will visit there in a few weeks. Fantastic. Now, I would not mind a trip to the States. I used to go to the, the States regularly down in Phoenix and Arizona um, with church for summits that we had on a yearly basis. But um, now, unfortunately, that isn't happening. But I absolutely loved visiting the United States. So if they ever want a watercolor demo person to come over, I'm here. Keeping moving on. I love doing windows. I find windows really interesting. I don't know, don't really know why, but I do. I find them pretty fascinating. Okay, and then we've got this. I find the sketch. Francis, if you go into the community part of the page, you'll see it there. When you're um, drawing something, you just notice so much more than you ever would if you weren't. Uh, and it's, it's such a really interesting uh, skill in terms of study, isn't it? So is there anybody uh, painting along today? Okay, so just trying to find some of these details here. Okay, that's that one here. And I also find that whatever pen I'm using is gonna give me a different quality of line than I would get if I was using like Faber-Castells or a, um, a, a dip pen. Reference picture. Hello, watercolor lefty. Um, if you look in the community section of the page, you will find it there. Okay, so I'm also aware that this ink needs to dry, and it'll have dried up here. So I'm gonna move up here. I'm gonna keep this moving because it's actually I find that if I don't keep it moving, then you can get lost in fussiness, and I do not want to get lost in fussiness today. We do not have the time. lines along here and then they've got these kind of ridge lines now the I've kind of got the uh, slightly indifferent now whenever you find that things aren't matching up I actually love that that's the case with this because what do you do with that do you lament the fact that you've actually messed up the lines or do you just sort of give the impression of it and what I tend to do is give the impression of it in the past whenever I was much younger and I was uh, painting I would have been destroyed by making a mistake like that. Whereas now, actually, I think it's one of the very things that actually brings a character to the piece that you're doing. So I don't, I don't really worry about that anymore. 
which is a great liberty to enjoy. So where else have we got in the world there, people? We've got um, Devon, we've got Ireland, we have, I'm not sure where Watercolour Lefty's from, but we have Washington as well. Okay, now, this tricky little bit here. So we've got these lines that are coming down here, which are part of the, it's smudging a wee bit down the bottom, but we're, we're not, hopefully that's gonna, uh, it's not too bad. Okay, so we could just keep going. So this is gonna end up being very illustrated as well, which is another thing that I'm happy enough for it to be. Oh, you're in Belgium. Very good. Obviously there's not too much of a time difference there. No, I noticed that you had responded to the story, Watercolour Lefty, would you tell us your name? Um, and I, uh, I, th I thought that, that was lovely, so thanks for doing that. It's always really fascinating who you um, who ends up coming on these lives, you know, so. Pulled all together with a few solid lines. <laughs> okay, now I've got these arches coming. And there's another arch. Do you know, on first glance, I thought this building doesn't look too bad. In actual fact, it is fiddly McFiddly. No. So we're going to just keep going down, getting the sense of this here. As I said, there's lots of things that could join up and aren't joining up and actually I think whenever you're going for something more illustrated I I really like that I, I like whenever it's not a perfect I mean I'm not I've said this many times but I'm I'm not a photorealist and therefore not concerned okay so you said WIM here actually where's Wim Wim Sydney I'll call it Wim uh, very curious to see how you're going to go about with all those bricks I may well ignore them I may hint at them, I'm not sure yet, I haven't decided yet. Um, the bricks, I'm not, there's different hacks that you can do to to capture bricks, or that I use to capture bricks, um, but I, there's a guy that I uh, know of and follow on Insta, um, I think it's Graham Reynard, and he was Le Fox, I think it was, but my goodness, he just observed every single brick that would do my head in, so I don't do that. What I do sometimes is this um, little ode to a brick, just in, in just little sections. But it's just too much for me. It just would I would completely lose interest, and um, so therefore I don't tend to really observe the bricks in any great detail whatsoever. Now the other thing that you can do is with the likes of these bricks, you know these lines in the top here just uh, hinting at them. It is amazing to me how much your eye really kind of fills in fills in the details, you know? So I don't worry too much about that. Um, and that is, let me see, put this line here. I'm trying to observe what way these lines actually go so it's getting a little bit more of a convinced perspective. These uh, pens, if you don't have a Lamy Safari, oh, they're lovely. And I swear I'm not being sponsored by them in any shape or form. Um, yes, extra fine nib, Francis uh, Penny. Thanks for saying. Uh, thanks for explaining that. I was just asking because the picture is about, let me see, what you say? About 80% bricks. Yes, it absolutely is. And I've totally got my proportions wrong with the building, but we're not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna keep going. Now the other thing is, is this line that comes straight down. I'm using carbon ink for anybody that's interested. Carbon ink is one of my favourite things in the world. I was introduced to it by a friend and um, I just find it is absolutely class because it dries quickly. It is super duper dark. But it's the probably the watercolor proof element for me that is really um, interesting. Okay, so like I said before, I'm going to leave out the sign. Now you can see the perspective is off here. That's all right. It 
If I teach anything today, please hear me. Just keep going. Because it's not about... I have been in that world of trying to do the perfection and it doesn't work. And the best work that I produce is work that I've just jumped into. So that's... I'm, I'm, I'm having faith and trust in the process and doing this. Um, and I it never ceases to amaze me how fulfilling that actually is when you do that, you know. So... Um, to anybody who's watching this, whether it's live or not, you just jump in and keep going. And it definitely, definitely will reward you. Okay. Okay, let me see. Um, it's an interesting perspective of the building. You're brave. <laughs> I'm not thinking about it, John. Penny, I have two Lamy extra fine and medium. Yeah, they are lovely pens. How long for carbon and to dry? A couple of minutes. You said yesterday and thought I waited enough, but it ran when I started watercolors. I, I don't think I have ever had the problem of it running, so um now I wanna line this up, even though it's not even lined up. And also I am taking huge liberties with the distances. As I said, with the um the distances with the you know, the likes of this gap here, this gap here. That actually touching this but here's some taking real creative license which is what we're meant to do unless you're trying to recreate it exactly which uh, very few on the planet can do and I actually don't find that that interesting it shows a lot of skill but I'm looking for interpretation and I'm looking at art that's what I have a huge value for okay so and this one is going at a mad angle I'm going to be brave and put it at a mad angle. I can't really see that because of where the tree is. I don't also know whether I'm going to keep the, the tree in or not. So as I'm drawing this, I'm making all of these decisions thinking, well, I won't die. Not in any big way, just as in what I want to do. Do I want to keep this in? Do I not want to keep this in? I'm just not overly concerning myself about it. Now, we'll have this lovely window here. Um, and it's kind of flanked on the left by, by that sign, which we're just going to ignore, as I've said a trillion times. How we doing for time? We're okay. And I'm also pleased I've got my trusty hairdryer, which I do think um, it's colours, but at the same point, it's a handy tool to have because whenever you're um, particularly painting like this and you're under the pressure of time, then it just lets you keep going, you know, and speed the whole process up. Okay, and then just this little bit of the building here. So the goal, part of the goal today is get the drawing down. Focus on keeping the drawing nice and loose. Once I get the drawing down, then I want to uh, move into moving into getting watercolor and starting building up the layers. Um, for any of you that know uh, anything on my channel at all, the main thing that I'm saying is that watercolour is waterproof whenever you let it dry and therefore you can work in layers which is I think what it's designed to do. I think that's when it works best and um, I really enjoy doing that so that's a big part of what I bring to the table in, in doing this. So. Okay and actually because that's there Want to nod to these windows, okay? Before uh, leftover left co watercolor left, he says before I put carbon in it, so I was still putting out when I was wearing it. Francis, true, I would avoid most bricks and make a few abstract blocky squiggles to indicate them. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. We're getting there. We're getting there. Now the other thing I would normally do if I was using other pens is go for a thicker nib to highlight the darker points, and I don't have now. I do have my uni pen, so I might do that because I find that really helps it to to pop. Do you ever stop and think isn't it crazy that now we're at this time in the planet where you can do things like lives and you have people from Australia, Belgium, uh, Northern Ireland, wherever else in Ireland, you know uh, Washington and we're able to actually 
sit and watch somebody else draw over the, over the internet. I mean, it's mad, isn't it? I mean, this is what happens when you hit your 40s, you start thinking all these things. Let's see. Okay, and I'm just going to put the line. Okay, the other thing that I do is sometimes true lefty, thank you, and plans you to feel the bricks works right. Yeah, feel the bricks, absolutely. The other thing that I do is, you know, for, so the main focus is this, this building, but what I want to, to do is to put it into context. So what I find I do then is um, just hint at other, you know, really go loose and hint at other bits of buildings and things. And then that, that And then that really sort of sets it into context and also just frees it up. I know mean, you may think I'm absolutely crazy. And that's also then the, um, and that's all I want to do. And I deliberately keep the lines really free and don't really care about, you know, what, what they're overly looking like because it's, it's saying, okay, so this building is in the street, but here's the bit I want you to look at. Um, I'm also going to continue this line on up just, just a touch more there. Totally got that perspective wrong there, but that's I'm not going to worry about that. And that's all I want to do, just to, to nod, to nod at that. Now I'm going to put in a little sign here. I tend to try and hide my signature wherever it is. I've got some uh, a little unipin set here. And I'm going to go, do you know what I will do first? I'm going to 0 0.1. And so. It's going to just take a minute to do. That little fan, I love the little fans of brick that you get on the, on the top. And then let me see. So that window there actually just needs a little bit more attention. So this is where whenever you're going around again, you can kind of see just little things that are actually quite important to the to the picture that you're doing. So do I want to hint? Yes, I will hint a little at some bricks. So what I do for bricks is this. Just making some very uh, simple lines to indicate, okay, there's some brickwork here. Let the eye know that that's what's going on. Okay, that's all I want to do. Maybe one more and a little bit more on this side here. That's it. That's all I want to do that. Just a general feel of the bricks. Okay, now moving then to 0 0.8. Now time is ticking on. So at this point, I am looking for the darkest points. And I am simply wanting to highlight those darkest points. And I find at this point that observing that just causes it to pop because that's actually what my eye sees is the light and the dark. And same in the underside of the windows here. So that would be the, the second part of the process for me. And um, would be really trying to point out those areas where there is actually that darker line. Um, and I do think it's quite remarkable. Hi there, King Crab, King Crabboy. What a handle. Do you share where you are in the world?
so this is just the this little bit here of getting this bit done. Okay, the other thing is I want to get that detail in that window there. And then this line here, okay. I'm going to move to, back to the carbon pen for that little bit. Now the perspective is completely wrong. Then, for those of you, JF, Colin, tis me, Joe from Italy. Hello, Joe from Italy. The exit only joined now. Okay, Francis, good way to highlight dark with different pen. Yes, works well. Yeah, it really does make it pop, doesn't it, Penny? Um, JF, Colin, Seville, Voral. Hello. I know, Italy. Oh, hi, I would love to be in Italy. Right, so I'm just giving this one Belfast. I'm going to give it the title of Belfast. Every time I hit that, the camera's rocking, isn't it? So let me move this off to the off to the side. I find that so much of it is about process um, and that sense of connection to process, and probably there's a familiarity um, and a safety that comes with it too, because it just feels like this is this is what I do and this is what I know to do, you know. Claire from Northern Spain. Hello, Claire. Where to get the stamps from? Um, Mark, I got the stamps in Hobbycraft, which I'm not sure where you are in the world, Mark, but um, oh, I was going to say Belf Belfast there. So we got, um, so Hobbycraft and they were $1.99. Um, I've used them now for years and years and they're absolutely stinking underneath, but they are my faithful stamps and my simple stamping pad, which I think was about a pound, really. Okay, now I have my water cup well away from um, where I'm going to be dunking my... Oh, you're in beautiful grey wheels. You know, cheaper, is isn't everywhere grey in the UK. Okay, so what we're going to do first is sky. I always go to sky first. And this is the massive brush that I was using in... Um, I think I did it in a, it was a continuous line on the Albert Clock. So I'm going to use it just for the sky. Now it holds a lot of water. So we're using Daniel Smith half pans. Um, mixing some cerulean and a little bit of ultramarine just for the sky. Um, actually for the sky and what it'll work well for is the, the windows too. Because if you look at windows, they tend to take on the sky. As you can see that those lines now there are lovely and dry from the um from the carbon ink. Okay, the other thing that I uh, do quite a lot is so I want to get some splats on it, but also then I can um find if there is any. Yeah, there's a little bit, just a little bit of pigment, but squeezing that out. So we can do the dab and grab here. So this is splattered all over the place. Don't mind that it is splattered on the side of the building. I'm okay with that. In fact, and then in some way that sort of indicates more and more he's not really caring about that building. He's um he's uh focusing on the on the middle one. Okay, thanks, Edward. Um, I'm not gonna lie, a little frustrated by the perspective, but I I, I uh, want to keep going with that. Um, what could I do with the building immediately comes away from the page by putting the sky in? Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Just these little, little different bits of process, really. Okay, next thing I want to do then is... Oh, and I had said as well about the windows. So for the windows, let's go... I'm going to use these. I have these sitting out. Um, these are the Sea White of Brighton. The folks at Sea White had sent these to me. Um, they're lovely. This is a number eight. Um, and I'm going to use the same colour as I said for the for the windows that I've used for the sky. I'll maybe mix it a little, little bit more. I think it's all right, actually. Mostly cerulean blue. 
You think your drawing arm has Tourette's. <laughs> Squeezing the brush, nice thing. It is nice because then it drops, it just uh, drops straight down. Oh, hello Dave, how are you? Dave, Dave had me on, um, it was in my meeting space, wasn't it Dave? And I came on to chat to the nice folks about, I was painting somewhere in Grey Abbey, which is in the Ards Peninsula in Northern Ireland, worth a Google, beautiful little village. And um, I was on and these, these folks were just asking me questions, which was lovely. I really enjoy all that, you know. Um, okay, so we're just, this is the bit where we're just doing the windows here. Flat edge brush. If you need me to go on about flat edge brushes, it's a nice, strong, jaunty character tip. Thanks, John, you're being kind. You should check out John. John, what's your, uh, John has now has an Etsy. His Drawings are, uh, they pop off the page and they are beautifully um, rendered. And what, is it Baxter Watercolours or do you tell us where we can find you? Shameless plug for John. He's just opened his Etsy store, so if you're interested, you can go and check him out. So just trying to look at these windows and see, right, where's this blue? I tend to not want to waste the colours that I have. So I'll look and see, right, where's the blue on the page? Um, and on Etsy. So I'm looking to see where the colors are. And just really kind of adding it in where I see it. Okay, what I'm gonna do then is do a quick dry. You're welcome for the plug, John, no problem. Oh yes, gonna turn off the sound for two seconds. Okay, you should be able to, to hear me again. I'm just going to plug in my Mac here so that I can continue to read all of your comments. That would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Uh, good, we're, we're connected now. Okay, so we have now got the blue in where we want the blue. And do check them out, Dan, do. And um, this stuff's lovely. Um, I always talk about um, mixing with the brush. I've moved to see whether Brighton size 18. Okay, JF, how thoughtful. Wish my hair, hair, hairdresser would turn off the sound. She insists on asking me things when blasting my ears with high decibel. Flap. I th think us men are um, more quiet in general. <laughs> A lot say that that's a point of discussion. Let's not go there. Okay, so um, I am using Indian Red and Burnt, is it Burnt? Yes, yeah, it's Indian Red and Burnt Sienna, but I want to earth a bit, so I'm going to add in some Umber here as well. Let's see. Now there's part of it as well. I don't think, I mean, this is quite bright, but this is this is first layer stuff, so we're not gonna worry too much. Just looking to see where the, the, the brightest of the layers are using the corner of the flat edge. That's why we love a flat edge, because it gives you the option of um, either using the corner or the full, you know, the full kind of spread. And I, I would tend to rotate it around as, as is needed. So, just need to load that brush up again. The other thing is, I've noticed those those two bits are incredibly dark. Okay, so it's still quite light now. If I turn the brush to the side, then it's going to drop a lot more pigment. Okay, now I'm going to make that a little bit. Yeah, that's quite nice there. Okay, so we're just making that a little bit uh, richer, so not too much. So what we can do, because I'm not loving that colour, so I'm going to I'm going to dry off my brush and do the dab and grab. So what should happen is that I hoover up this colour 
Ta-da! Mostly disappeared. And then I'm going to rip it back down again. More um, realistic kind of a brick colour. In my mind. In my head. Yeah, I'm not happy with that. Now, I'm also not too concerned if these colours, uh, you know, if there's any bleed to happen in there because they are so similar, so it's not going to... You know, it's not going to wreck it in any, any shape or form. Um, Dan, Colin, what was I trying to tell you last week is I post my paintings under my name on Flickr. Ah, right, okay. Flickr, I, I've heard of Flickr. Um, I'm also, back to this painting, I'm also deliberately leaving little bits of... Um, just these little sort of white gaps which will hopefully add to the the kind of watercolour effect as we go on with the painting. Okay, so obviously this bit here is grey and the rest isn't. So Just moving across right here. And I've mixed up a lot of this because I know that there's um, a lot of this area to it. Old timey site for photos. Yes, I think, funny, I get my space vibes off uh, from when you say flicker. I don't know whether I'm right about that. So those, you can see that obviously where I've put the bricks, I've gone over it, but then once that watercolour is dry, because watercolour is nearly 100% waterproof when it's dry, then I can add on top of that. So, and I want to observe here where this brick is and where it's not, because they're the bits that'll really um, sort of give off that this is the building, you know, it's a character, sorry, let me get my words right. It's a characteristic of this particular building. So, and I'm, I actually like doing things with a shorter amount of time because it reduces any possibility of, um, I just turned my son down as he beep beeps, he's currently working on his Lego. And he, um, doesn't, he must have forgotten that I'm out here doing a live. Dan, old time you said, uh, that is so beautiful. I take it, you're either talking about Flickr or this painting. Flickr, yes, Flickr's been around for ages old timey site. It's a bit like I have um, a teenage daughter and she was telling me that they don't use WhatsApp. They use, um, what do they use? Snapchat. They communicate via Snapchat. Have you ever heard anything like it? Just shows you how things change with the, as the generations go. Okay, and then this is brick as well here, here. So I'm just referring back to the image to make sure that I'm I'm capturing the bits that I want to, that I think are important. <laughs> Dan's old. Don't tell us how old. Um, Francis. <laughs> if only my son knew that I was actually on alive. I should send him a message. Power and car park feeling. Um, ch check like everybody. Oh, thank you. Thank you for um, coming on, Francis. Even from your car park, how dedicated is that? I hope you find some benefit to this today. Okay, so what I want to do as well is drop in some of the pigment in that is um, already wet so that it's going to just give a little bit more depth as I do that. Okay, and the last thing I want to do uh, down here is to flick. So I put my hand as a shield and then just a, a flick a little bit. I love the flick. Right. OK, 
Okay, that should be us back. We went off there for a minute. That's a wee while ago. Thank you, Taylor. Um, and Dan said, we're in Dev K, Wayne McGovern. Is your board lying flat? Uh, it, uh, it is sort of. It's propping up part of the um, tripod sort of system that I'm using so that it can have the, the mobile on, its, on, on that angle. Okay, what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to mute the camera. Flicking makes me as in you, it provides an unnecessary break, and then you think, oh, I'll do this later. Is that what you're saying, Penny? My right, two tech's gonna switch the cat or the microphone off so I can try this. Hopefully we are reconnected, not sure what happened there. So if you didn't hear me, I said there, Francis, um, so what you're saying is that whenever you come to the flicking stage, you know that you've effectively finished the painting and that's your, we're at the end now. Okay, so I'm just, this is just straight up paints gray. That's going in for the, um, for this line underneath here. Okay, and that the gray actually, is all throughout where the windows are. So I'm gonna just mix up a little bit more of the Payne's Gray. Okay, so some comments here. Claire, thanks for calling great picture. I've got to go bye, Claire. Dan, I know it's time to stop whenever you choose Cat Gack. Cat Gack, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, Sketch Club, no, sorry, John. Um, it's, I had to pull it because the girl that I lead it with, there was a death in their family, so sorry about that. Um, Penny Hewitt, yes, okay, so, sorry John, I should maybe should have announced that. And one of the, it was one of the times you could go, oh, annoying. Okay, so we're just getting these lines in here for the frames of the building and deliberately again letting it go over the lines a little bit to give that kind of more sort of illustrated feel. And also, it's the t you know the time pressures and wanting to get as much of this done within the hour as I can. Okay, and we've got fourteen minutes left before I need to skedaddle, so just trying to go as much as I can. Okay, now I want to. I'm going to actually move to. Uh, that would make much more sense to use a to use a smaller brush. Just lifting that little bit that went over there. Smaller brush is going to give me that bit more control. So this is just the, the window frames. So just using the same well, it seems like that is a slightly grainy sort of a tone. Just in looking at that, but I'm just gonna apply this one. And I've also there's a glaringly obvious thing that I've left out as well, which is the tree. And um, I could add it in afterwards if I wanted to, but I don't. I didn't um, want to to make it such a such a strong feature. So I'm also because this top of this here is quite grey, so I'm gonna add that in there. Okay, so what I want to do as well is um, 
use that the color of the brick that I had again just be moving that along for the for the second layer oh vomit like when a cat gags oh. I've never liked the word vomit it's a horrible word really isn't it I suppose because of what it's connected to okay so just again it, it gives you this idea of the the a little bit of an idea of the brickwork and you know it's showing me that it's not this is not a, a smooth surface and I, I find that it's the layering up thing isn't it Is the layering up thing. Okay, and particularly down here. So, using the flat edge in that motion is going to create a sense of perspective as well and track and turn that section. I can give that idea just going along there okay now for this top bit you crack yourself up you're hilarious Dan hilarious okay so for this top bit I want a colour that's a little bit more luminous so I'm using the Indian red for that use the Indian red and a little of the burnt sienna pop a little bit more and hopefully this mix yeah it does good there's also something about when you're mixing a color you actually don't know fully what that color is going to look like until it's on the page which is why um I, I would see guys you know trying it out i actually quite like i almost like living on the edge because i don't tend to treat, like i have a wee bit of watercolor paper beside me just to try it out but it's certainly uh good way to check okay what actually is this going to look like when I when I put it down on the page okay okay so two seconds get this dry Okay, so what I want to do before our time is up, because we've got about another uh, good eight minutes, um, what I want to do is show how I um, tackle the bricks. So I'm mixing an umber with the Indian red. I need to get that umber agitated there so it's moving. I want quite a thick mix um, with lots of pigment in it because I'm going to put in a little bit of the thin's grey as well, actually, to darken it down. Okay, so and I can use that later anyway. But what I want to do is just with the side of the the flat edge. Then is no, not much. so we need to use the dab and grab. There we go. Okay, Lee says the second part of painting gives so much more texture. I always think I do too much though. Yeah, it's about learning when to stop. But also, I think a lot of um, what people think is. Um, is overworking is that they're not actually not letting it dry so just letting it dry yields a lot of fruit you tell I'm not talking because I'm just trying to focus okay And 
also these there. They remained mysteriously light. Now that's actually a good tone for creating shadow as well. So I'm gonna shadow that across there. And obviously I've said this before as well, but there's two ways of um, creating shadow. One is to add black or darker color. The second is to, on a second layer, use the same color again, um, which has been mixed to a more, uh, kind of, I was gonna say pungent, is quite a good word, a more intense um, pigment. Then that really, it it makes it, it makes the shadows pop in a, was in some ways a more pleasant way now I'm gonna add some James more James Gray to the to this one down for this top bit of the shadow but just adding those little bits of uh, shadow in will really really help so the back of that's darker too um, and then this, this the whole side of the building actually um, is under there under each of the under each of the ledges as well, you always find this. It'll be like a dark pool around it, you know. It's gonna darken that down even more. Pick up some of that. This is where you really start to begin to to find some depth appear in your picture. And it's just by adding those lines in. Um, John, when you're tackling shadows, do you tend to use a contrast and dark color just layer up? Uh, I'll add normally a little bit of a like an umber or, or a James Gray or something like that in, but I do really like um, adding in the same color more so. Because I think it gives, I just think it adds something more to it, John, you know? Okay, I'm just looking to see. got four minutes left so let's move them quickly along here try and capture those areas now what I want to do just quickly is then those shadows for that kind of creamy part of the building just, just a little hint of a line there also just underneath here trying to notice where those where those kind of areas are now at the top it is so much darker so this is where sometimes you need to get a little bit braver because actually in those windows there's very very little of the of the blue so it would be wrong of me to, to leave that area white because it defines so much of the of, of the building up there you know so I'm just gonna go over those those areas that I had touched before um Add them in there. Okay, and the other thing that I can do then is also just those wee sections of brick and just in other little areas. And especially the, the corner of the flat edge works really, really well to just see it just adds in that just slight effect of brick, which is really going to help with it. But we have now, I think, pretty much run out of time about three minutes i've got this yes lexi i've got this um so that folks is all i'm going to do on this painting i don't think that i'm going to return to it again and it's just a very simple way of tackling the building let me see if i can so thank you so much to everybody, grief my hair's got all wild. It shows you how dramatic 
uh, painting actually is. So what I'll do is I'll post uh, later on a picture of the actual painting that I've done. Um, so there you go, there's a, an R. Uh, just having a bit of fun and drawn with it and I hope it encourages you to have a go. Thank you to everybody who stuck with me throughout this. Um, great to have the questions in the comments. If you're enjoying the content, like and subscribe. Let me know anything you'd like to see videos on and I'm going to be talking about this little thing in a next video Woo. Um, and explaining what I think these are actually for. So uh, have a good rest of your day, whatever part of the day you're in and see you sometime soon. Okay, bye for now.